What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Before we get any further, I just want to say there are going to be minor spoilers for Avengers Endgame in this video. So if you have not seen that movie and you want to see it without any spoilers, click off this. There's not going to be that crazy of spoilers, so if you don't care that much, then I feel like you could probably watch this. But again, spoilers for Avengers Endgame. I gotta say that I never really thought that I would be making a video about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm not saying that I'm upset about it because I've always loved talking about it with my friends and stuff. I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, so it's kind of cool that my two worlds kind of collided and I have this a chance to, you know, make this video. So as you can tell by the title of the video, we're going to be talking about Thor in Avengers Endgame. If you're not familiar with Thor or with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Thor is the god of thunder. He is Odin's son. He is one of the strongest Avengers. He's had a few movies and in the movies he's usually been more of like a stoic kind of character and recently in the more recent Marvel movies uh, Thor Ragnarok is kind of where it started he's become more of a kind of a comedic character and that's when I really started to fall in love with Thor was when they kind of started switching it when uh, uh, Tiger Watiti I think is his name is how you pronounce it uh, when that director of Thor Ragnarok really kind of started making Thor more than just like a super strong stoic warrior and they use Chris Hem Hemsworth ability to be comedic and funny that's when I really started like falling in love with Thor actually funny story the first time I ever saw Thor Ragnarok when I saw his hair when he gets his haircut in that movie I was like I want my hair to look like that. So I am very much so a fan of these movies. So to set up the character of Thor in Endgame, you guys know that in Infinity War, he is super close to killing Thanos with Stormbreaker. He hits him right in the chest. Thanos says, you should have aimed for the head. Snap, half the world is gone. So starting Endgame, you can tell that Thor has almost PTSD-like symptoms and he's very, very, he feels really bad that he didn't end things. He feels like he could have ended things. So in the start of Endgame and pretty much throughout the whole movie, you can tell that he has that guilt built up inside of him. Now, I don't want to spoil too much of Endgame if you haven't seen it, but there's a five year time jump in the movie. And then the next time we see Thor, we see that he has, you know, he's definitely still dealing with the PTSD symptoms. He started drinking a lot and he's actually put on a lot of weight and he's basically fat Thor for the rest of the movie. Now, personally, when I first saw this, I thought that it was hilarious. I really, I, I thought that it was great. I really enjoyed Fat Thor. <laughs> like, I really enjoyed that character. Honestly, he was probably my favorite character in the movie. I'm somebody that likes comedy, so I love that Chris Hemsworth is able to express that, and it, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm just a buff dude that looks good. It's like, I'm actually a really good actor, and I'm also really funny. I knew, I knew when I was watching the movie that there was gonna be people that had issues with Thor being mm -hmm. overweight, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. The article that we are going to be reading through is from BuzzFeed News. The author's name is kind of hard to pronounce. I'll put it up here. One thing I want to say, this is not at all me trying to hate on the person that wrote this. This is just me giving my opinion on the article. So the article starts off, what happened to Thor in Avengers Endgame? The latest entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe uses a superhero's body as a cheap punchline. There's a feeling that every fat person knows it happens in the moment when you're watching something and enjoying it and then suddenly it's like you've been slapped in the face. Your stomach sinks and your heart twists and your chest tightens, your smile dies and your tear tears might even form in your eyes. You've been hit with a fat joke. So right away when I read that I knew that, I, I hate to say it but this is like obviously very much so someone that has that kind of victim mentality uh, because I know that even when I was morbidly obese, you know, when I was 360 pounds, if I like saw a fat joke in a movie, it didn't, like I never felt personally attacked. Like the only time I ever felt like personally attacked from a fat joke was when somebody was saying a fat joke to me. You know, that was like the only time. I never really had too much of an issue with like fat jokes happening in media. That was just my opinion though. And I do wanna say we're gonna be skipping through the article a little bit. There's just some stuff that I don't feel like is necessary because I really wanna focus on like the Thor and Marvel stuff. Uh, but I will link it down in the description if you do wanna check it out. Then she goes on to say, that's why as a fat person, I carefully monitor the media I consume. If I know there's going to be a fat character, I have to consider whether it's worth watching a show or movie where I might find bodies like mine being mocked or shamed. When I do turn on media with a fat character, I hope for the best, but expect the worst. I brace for it to hurt. Sometimes though, I don't get the chance to prepare myself. Sometimes the fat joke blindsides me and leaves me breathless in ways I could have never anticipated. Like when one of my favorite celebrities dons a de dehumanizing fat suit, turning one of my favorite characters into a walking, talking fat joke. 
Yes, I'm talking about Fat Thor. Now, obviously, this is the main point of the article. You know, her whole point is that she does not appreciate that Chris Hemsworth is in a fat suit, that he is playing Fat Thor. She feels like it's dehumanizing to people that are overweight. And for me, I, I kind of, I, I personally like fundamentally disagree with her. There's something about seeing Chris Hemsworth playing a literal god, stomping around, sprouting vaguely Shakespearean lines and being mildly and affectionately objectified that really sucked me in. My love for the character only grew over the years, reaching new heart heights when Thor Ragnarok as director Taika Waititi unleashed his chaotic energy into the MCU and crafted a movie that allowed Hemsworth comedic talents to shine, even while stripping Thor of his girlfriend, his father, his eye, his best friends, his hammer, and his homeland. Now, like I said earlier, I completely agree with that. I think that Thor became one of my favorite characters after watching Thor Ragnarok. I really, really, that's probably one of my favorite Marvel movies. Hemsworth, under Watiti's direction, plays Thor as a three-dimensional hero who can deliver one-liners, but also crucially show emotional vulnerability. And by Odin, he is powerful. By the end of that movie, Thor has realized that the external things he's relied on to define his worth, his father's opinion, his hammer, aren't as important as he thought, and what really matters is what's within. His power comes from himself, and the moment he embraces this and soars through the sky in a streak of lightning set to the sound of Led Zeppelin's The Immigrant Song is one of the most glorious moments in MCU history. Ultimately, Thor Ragnarok is a movie about a man learning to love himself, not in a cocky way as Thor does in the beginning of the series, but in a way that recognizes his true worth. Now, it's interesting that she says that right there because honestly, like the argument that she has towards the end of the movie, which we'll get into, is that he doesn't feel like he's worthy, but I feel like his whole arc in Endgame was that he found out even though he doesn't have the body of a god, he's still worthy and he can still fight. Like when he went to go visit his mom and he reached for Mjolnir and it ended up coming and he was like, I'm still worthy. He It showed him that even though, you know, he might be overweight and I don't even think like the weight was the most important thing. It was more like him dealing with his PTSD, him not wanting to fight, him feeling like he wasn't worthy. Once he was over able to overcome that, then he realized he was worthy. I think one of the biggest things that they did and the thing that I was really, really happy about is that when he did get Mjolnir and when he did have Stormbreaker and when he was fighting with both of those, he didn't do some like weird thing where he like reached his hands into the sky, a bunch of lightning hit him and then he was all chiseled and, and had a buff physique again. I thought that it was awesome that they kept him overweight for the whole movie, they didn't change that. I honestly think her argument would have a lot more weight if they did that. If instead of, you know, keeping him overweight for the whole movie throughout everything, if they would have, you know, made him chiseled again and then, oh, now that he's buff and stuff, he can fight again. It was like, no, he can fight even though he might be overweight. Avengers Endgame had a unique opportunity to explore Thor's PTSD and depression in a nuanced and meaningful way. What does it look like when an actual god fails? How does someone with power literally running through their veins grapple with the idea that they were still powerless in the face of destruction and death? According to Joe and Anthony Russo, the brothers who directed Avengers Endgame, the answer to such questions is alcoholism, binge eating, and a general lack of self-care and subsequent weight gain. These things are inherently problematic. A fat, depressed alcoholic Thor could have led to a really interesting and refreshing expl exploration of mental health and addiction and the way those things interact with masculinity and the ex expectations placed on men and heroes. It could have been a golden example of how a man can still be powerful, worthy, attractive, and and a superhero. Again, like I just said, I think they did do that. Now, obviously, this movie, so this movie is three hours long, right? There's a lot of time for them to do stuff, but again, there's 20, 25, 30 characters that they're kind of focusing on. So I can understand why they weren't able to maybe, maybe she feels like they should have given Thor more time. I feel like he had a pretty good amount of time, but I think like once you watch the movie, you realize that it's not like they can focus on one person for too long. And I think once you watch the movie, you realize that this movie is mainly focused on Iron Man and Captain America. They're the two people that have kind of always been the leaders of the Avengers, you know, even in the comics and stuff like that. So I understand why they kind of focused on that a little bit more than just Thor's storyline. Instead, it becomes the comic relief of the movie while other characters are given space to grieve and make inspirational speeches and try to move on with their lives. Thor wallows. His trauma is never treated with sincerity or respect. He's become fat and lazy, dirty and gross. And for that, he is punished. The camera lingers on his bloated torso in a cruel subversion of the loving gaze normally aimed at his shirtless and ripped Thor. Other characters mock his appearance, comparing him to melted ice cream and suggesting cheese whiz throws th flows 
flows through his veins. Now again, obviously everyone's gonna feel different about how the movie portrays people, but for me, I, I didn't feel any sort of, I didn't think it was overly mean or overly rude. I thought that the jokes were, were funny. I know everyone that I was around was laughing and they, they had a good time. I don't think that, I don't think that the people that made the movie were trying to be at all mean or rude. And I honestly, there's just like a small group of people that seem to be really upset by this. I think that most people understand what they were going for and were not at all upset by it. Meanwhile, the rest of the characters don't really challenge the idea that Thor is less worthy because he is fat. When he tries to wear the new Infinity Gauntlet and reverse the damage done by Thanos' snap, the other characters panic and, panic and push him away as if his mere proximity could do damage. And while Thor does get his hammer Mjolnir back and manages to land a couple of hits against Thanos in the final battle, it's Captain America who receives the shining moment of glory with Thor's hammer in his hand. While it's a cool moment proving the long-held fan theory that Steve is worthy, it's also another way for the story to systematically sideline Thor. This is where in the article I just completely disagree because for me personally, again, like I said, there are so many characters in this movie and like like I said in Infinity War Thor had that moment that was his time to shine he and he did shine he completely crushed it in Infinity War he was like the hero that came and saved everything yeah it didn't end up perfect but then that time that was Steve Rogers that was Captain America's time to shine that was that was by far probably everyone's favorite part in the movie everyone was freaking out in my theater I saw it like two days after it came out everyone was stoked so like to be upset that they did that, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And that's when I think that this person is just looking for things to be upset with because I thought that was such a powerful part of the movie, having Steve Rogers, you know, wield Mjolnir with his shield and completely, you know, just crush Thanos at that moment. Indeed, even when Thor is fighting Thanos, he barely makes an impact, which is a stark contrast to the way Thor was able to um, overpower him in Infinity War. Cumulatively, the message is clear. Thor is not what he was. And just as his muscular physique once communicated his power, his fatness is now an embodiment of his weakness. When I was watching this, I had no, it was not like I was thinking, oh, because he's fat, he's not gonna be able to beat Thanos or he's not doing as well against Thanos anymore. It was more that the issues that he's been through, you know, the PTSD that he's suffering from and all of those things that are going through his mind, you know, he lost a half and then he lost a half of a half. So he only has a quarter of the people from Asgard are left on this planet. You know, his dad's dead. His sister destroyed his hammer at one point. Like all of those things are going through his head. So yeah, of course it's gonna weigh on him. And I don't, I think that this person just saw someone that was overweight and that's all they could focus on. And that like, there was so much more to focus on in this movie so to be upset about that it honestly like i feel like this person ruined the movie for themselves because that's all they could see was the weight of thor marvel has traded on the sex appeal of its stars and of thor in particular for over a decade they've reinforced time and time again what a hero looks like tall muscular waxed oiled white male they've expanded that somewhat in recent years through the likes of black panther and captain marvel although the physical appearance of superheroes even in those movies largely conforms to the same old narrow constraints of what beauty is with fat thor marvel had a chance to push those boundaries further instead they diminished his hero status it was as though the fatter he got the less he was worth which leaves fat people sitting in the audience people like me and no doubt countless others, including little kids, feeling pretty worthless too. Fat men and fat women deserve a chance to be heroes. They deserve the chance to be people. They deserve more than to be a fat joke. Again, like I said, I don't agree with that. Towards the end of the movie, he does feel like he's worthy. He does feel like he can fight. Obviously, with the forces that are against him, it's not like he can take on the whole army by himself, but it's not like they completely switch him and they make him no longer overweight. They can keep him the same size he is, but he's still able to fight and beat a bunch of people up, and he's able to do what a hero does, and they keep him overweight. Again, I think that's the most important part that this person is missing, is that they didn't just completely change him and it's like she didn't see the end of the movie when he's killing it and you know he ends up going off with the guardians of the galaxy and he's completely funny he's completely like he was before but yeah he's a little bit overweight but that doesn't make him worthless like i never for a second in my mind thought oh he's worthless because he's overweight but for some reason that's what the author of this article seemed that was like only thing they were able to pick off from the movie 
But yeah, those are just my thoughts on the movie. Again, as you guys can tell, I was a huge fan. I loved it. I am a fan of the Marvel Universe, so I'm excited to see what comes out next. It was kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. It was kind of fun being able to share my uh, kind of nerdy side with you guys. I've always wanted to talk about this, but I just never had a chance to. But again, I would love to hear what you guys thought of, you know, Fat Thor. And if you guys thought it was funny, if you guys thought it was rude, you know, do you agree with the article? Do you disagree with the article? I would love to hear what you, you know, you have to say. Again, I will link it down in the description so you can read the whole thing for yourself. You know, I did edit it a little bit just so for time, so I'm not reading a bunch of stuff that isn't at all relevant. But again, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. There was one other thing that I wanted to say. Oh yeah, look how buff I am. Ugh. Obey the warning signs, and when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop. 